The Last Campfire is a top-down puzzle game that combines a symbolic narrative with a vast array of unique challenges, all taking place in a cute, endearing world. You play as Ember, a wanderer of the land, helping others by instilling hope to move forward, all the while searching for their own purpose. The narrative of The Last Campfire is a story of many things. It details a journey of embers, inhabitants of this world, reaching campfires, which are safe, communal areas that provide a light in the dark, with the final goal being the last campfire, hence the name of the game. But this is a long voyage, one that challenges you not just physically, but mentally. You're not just travelling for the sake of it. Each ember actually has their own reason for moving forward, but an arduous trek such as this makes you question your purpose for doing it in the first place. This is where the story of the game really begins to expand. When embers lose sight of their motives, their determination begins to fade. They give in to their doubts and despair, entering a silent, almost unresponsive state. They become forlorn, as the game calls it, a word essentially meaning alone and abandoned by the world. This is where you come in. Your main objective is for you yourself to reach the last campfire, but on the way you find dozens upon dozens of lost forlorn. What you must do is give them hope, a reason to persevere through the dark, finding others to encourage each other to move forward. Your purpose is to essentially be their lighthouse, to remind them of why they are making this journey and give them the push they need to continue, while also showing them compassion and understanding. It's an incredibly heartfelt approach to storytelling that puts these embers at the centre stage, letting their feelings be the main drive of the story. The only off-putting thing about them is that they eat barbecued frogs on sticks. If it isn't clear enough, a lot of the narrative is an allegory for depression. There's obviously more to it than that, and I am in no way trying to apply any redundancy to it, but the core message revolves around that. You're guiding other travellers struggling with feelings of sadness and self-hatred by giving them a reason to fight. The last campfire represents a hopeful path that, while still fraught with challenges, leads to something better. It's a story about people. It's not just about embers trekking to their destination, it's also about the citizens who already live here. The ones who used to be so full of joy and passion for what they did, only for them too to become forlorn. You learn about what happened to make them end up this way, but ultimately, the main purpose is to present them with a way forward, showing that regardless of what has happened in the past, there's still hope for a better future. It's a beautifully profound message that is managed perfectly, the story as a whole has an emotional impact that sticks with you. Now, a thing to bear in mind, this is a kid's game, so heavy topics like this need to be treated carefully, and The Last Campfire does this to a T. It's one of those experiences that is accessible to everyone. It has a charming narrator that brings a certain magic to the game that makes it feel like you're listening to a children's fairy tale. What is this? Not food. Bring me food! The characters are whimsical and cute, with each having their own standout moments, and they all have a direct impact on Ember's story. Whether it's an old fisherman helping Ember catch something, or a giant pig opening up a new pathway. As for Ember themselves, you don't really learn too much about them, only that they are making the same journey as all the other Embers in this world. The only difference is that you are going out of your way to help others. You're not just making the trip alone, you are going with a vast community. They interact with a spirit, who also happens to be a guide, who helps light each campfire. It all builds up to a powerful conclusion that drives the core theme of the narrative to its climax, in a way that makes you reflect on everything you've been through leading up to this point. From a story standpoint, this came as a knockout success and the praise is only going to continue from here. While its narrative is a wide pool of emotions, when it comes to the visuals, The Last Campfire keeps things simple. It has a bright colour palette and a small handful of environments at its disposal, 
but it uses all of this to brilliant effect. I'll start with the environments first. The world is split into multiple levels, each having their own paths that trail off into new locations. If you see a distinct corridor leading somewhere, it'll almost certainly be a new level. Because of this, it's usually difficult to get lost. That being said, pay careful attention to your surroundings. This was something that I didn't really do at first, and as a result, I did get lost for a bit. You don't have control of the camera, meaning you are completely at the mercy of locked perspective without the means to manage it at your will. I would say this is my only criticism of the visual side of things. I don't mind not having access to the camera, as for the most part it isn't necessary with this game, but there were a couple paths that were a bit too obscure for my liking. It is a minor complaint though, since this rarely happened. Nevertheless, being lost isn't always necessarily a bad thing. There's plenty to see in these levels. If I'm being honest, most of the things you'll encounter or can interact with almost definitely revolve around whatever your main objective will be at the time. Things are there for a reason, and they are meant to be tinkered with. What I like about this is how spread out the objectives are. One thing you might need could be placed on the other side of the map, or it could be sealed away through some obscure method. It's not as simple as walking through a field. You have to investigate each place you enter, and figure out why each component is important. In terms of side objectives, there aren't really any except for the various writings you can find from other travellers. These are short transcripts that detail emotions felt by other wanderers, and they are rarely cheerful. In all honesty, this was probably the most sombre aspect of the game, but it makes sense when you take the rest of the story into consideration. There's also a surprising amount of verticality to these levels. They're not just random places scattered around, they all connect with each other in some way. There are plenty of times where I found myself back in places I'd been to before, but in a completely new section of them that was previously closed off to me. It's a really nice detail that I greatly appreciated, as it makes the level design as a whole feel intricate and well-rounded. As for their appearance, some of these locations are absolutely gorgeous. I might be biased since I enjoy bright colours, but each place you travel to leaps out at you. Like I said before, they're not overly complex in their design approach, but there's enough there to leave an impression. The game utilises colour to achieve some fantastic results. Each environment stands out thanks to its colour. The opening levels are darker, but the higher you go, the brighter it becomes, which feels reflective of the journey you are taking. Likewise, the character designs are unique, even if the embers look very similar to each other. Each character you interact with is memorable thanks to their appearance. What makes the visuals pop the most, however, is the lighting. This is what ties the levels up in a neat ribbon. It really elevates everything about the visual elements. It makes the colours shine, the characters glow, and it generates an enchanting atmosphere that pulls you in. There's one section of the level design that I haven't talked about yet, and that is the puzzles. Since it is a puzzle game, the core gameplay mostly revolves around them, so that's what I'm going to be talking about in the next section. What I will say is this, they take what was already a captivating experience into something much greater. So puzzles are a vital part of The Last Campfire, and it's one of the main things that makes this game a real highlight. Each time you encounter a forlorn, you must go through and solve a puzzle in order to acquire what is essentially their spark their drive. In reflecting on their current state of mind, it is currently locked away, so you must break the barrier and bring it back to them. These challenges vary in their difficulty. There were some that only took me a couple of minutes to get the gist of, and then you had those that genuinely had me stumped for quite some time. I even had to resort to a guide on a couple of occasions. This isn't to say that these puzzles are too inconsistent or that the difficulty is unbalanced in any way. It is entirely dependent on how you approach them. There will be times when you will be required to think outside the box. If you're typically good at doing that, then you might not have much issue with these puzzles at all. The difficulty isn't what makes these special though. I haven't played a puzzle game with this much creativity put towards its puzzles since I played Monument Valley. While these aren't as magical per se, the amount of variation in them is staggering. 
The Last Campfire has this thing where, just when you think you've seen it all and have the hang of it, it introduces something completely new that brings extra dynamics into the equation. Wind machines that blow out fires, sunbeams, dangerous bridges, levers that alter the environment, spinning rocks, rolling rocks, and weird water snake things. I haven't even mentioned everything, those are just things at the top of my head. This happens from start to finish. There is never a dull moment in this game. You're always given new tools to play with, and the way each puzzle utilizes them is entirely unique. No two puzzles are the same, either. There is always something different about each of them. In all honesty, I was in awe. There were so many times where I would complete a puzzle and just sit back for a moment and think about just how cool it was. What makes them even more charming is that each one has a story. The narrator reflects on the journey each one of these forlorn took that resulted in them becoming this way, which just adds that extra bit of character to them. The ones revolving around more prominent characters are structured based on that journey as well, with the path leading downwards to their spirit, then having to climb back up to the top to give it back to them, reflecting the downward spiral they took that led them to their despair. Ugh, I could gush about this game for hours, it's just so brilliant. Anyway, enough about the puzzles. What else is there? Well, the act of exploration is a fun gameplay activity in itself too. Almost always there will be paths that, at first, you cannot take, and it was entertaining trying to figure out how to go about them. One important thing to do is to keep an eye on your surroundings. If there's a big rock, maybe you can push it to open a new path. The more things you interact with, the better understanding you have of not just that particular level, but the world as a whole. You're basically fitting all the pieces together. As a result, exploration is pretty fulfilling. Over time, you'll find new interactables, such as this fruit, which can be used to lure pigs, or stone statues that, if placed correctly, can open up a hidden passageway. In the second half of the game, you acquire more impactful tools, such as a horn which allows you to move certain objects at your will, and a boat which can sail across areas flooded with water. As a side note, you can customise the boat. I made mine a big yellow duck. I love this game. I'll end this section off by saying that while the last campfire is simple in nature, how it utilises and implements its mechanics is anything but. It finds ways to break the mould in a way that isn't dizzying or hard to keep up with. By changing little things or adding an extra dynamic, it's able to captivate you in new and exciting ways. Wow, I am a simp for this game. I'm not even going to deny that either, it's true. I just wasn't expecting this game to be as fantastic as it is. I'm actually kicking myself that I didn't play it sooner. It was in my library for ages, and I just never touched it. Anyway, The Last Campfire has a lot of ideas, and it hits the nail on the head with pretty much all of them. It's got a touching story that manages to deal with some heavy topics in a way that's appropriate for younger audiences, and engaging enough maybe even relatable to an extent, for mature ones. Its presentation is something that the game excels at. It knows exactly what it is and what it means to be, and because of that, it feels like a true labour of love. Its cutesy design and beautifully vibrant visual aesthetic do much to leave a lasting impression on you. But it's the puzzles that really make their mark, and they are definitely what I will remember most about the experience. With the pretty decent amount of puzzles that are on offer, there was never a dull moment to be had. No repetition or mundane challenge, I was continuously satisfied and impressed. The experience as a whole is one of charm. You could go in for just the story or just the puzzles and have an immensely enjoyable time with it. I was completely enraptured by the whole thing, and it will remain with me for a long time to come. Thank you for watching. It's been a while since I've done a really positive review, and it makes a nice change. Anyway, if you enjoyed it, then be sure to give it a thumbs up, and subscribe if you want to see more like it. Let me know what you want to see reviewed next, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.